Good afternoon or good morning everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, which is all gonna be about catalog organization. Uh, so one of those tasks that uh, we should all be good at, but often it gets left out. So what we're gonna do today is just define what a catalog is and how it works. We do a couple of or a few different import scenarios. So you get the handle of that. And then we look at organizing directly in your system and organizing with virtual collections as well to exercise uh, the full power of the catalog. Uh, before we get to that, uh, welcome to uh, those of you who are out on Facebook and YouTube at the moment and also to those uh, in our web webinar room as well. For those of you in the webinar room, if you want to ask a question, it helps if you pop it in the Q&A tab. Uh, just separates it out from the main chat and it's a little bit easier for myself and Diego to see who's uh, also in the webinar room and for those of you on Facebook and YouTube then feel free to put your questions in there as well and we will go ahead and answer those as Yulia is keeping an eye on those channels too. All right so uh, without further ado let's just move over to Capture One. Just one thing that's also worth mentioning is that today, oh, let's just move this window, sorry, is that today uh, we had a new version of Capture One come out. Uh, very importantly, includes lossless compression for the Sony A1 series, uh, some new camera support, some new lens support, uh, support for the latest version of Big Sur if you're on 11.2.3. So just go ahead and grab that from CaptureOne.com as well. Okay, so. Let's get started. Right, I'm going to close this catalog down. We don't need this. It's just better than looking at a blank screen when we come to it. And as I said, we're going to start from scratch, make a catalog, do a few different import scenarios, do some organization, and then we should be good. So let's start by saying file new catalog, and we're going to call this uh, webinar PM like so. Oh, let's turn on the mouse mouse highlighter so we know where we're looking. Um, now, by default, Capture One will put your catalog in the pictures folder, which is a perfectly fine place to put it. So all we're defining now is the catalog file. And really, Capture One, like any other database-driven file management system, uh, uses exactly that, a database. So we are creating a Capture One catalog, which is a database that knows where your pictures are and knows the adjustments for each of those pictures and the metadata and how everything is organized. So really it's just a very smart, highly you know, efficient performing database. Now where you put that catalog is relatively important. So for the best performance, if you're storing it on the workstation that you're working on, that's gonna be the best solution. Uh, essentially you can store a catalog anywhere. Uh, so I could put this catalog on an external drive and it will actually function pretty nicely, especially if the connection to that external drive is you know, a high performance one like Thunderbolt 3, and it's also on a high performance drive like an SSD. If I was to put this catalog file on an ancient mechanical old USB one hard drive, then it's not gonna be as good. Where we place our pictures really is less critical, but to be honest, so you've got your catalog with you, it's good to have it internally on your system. Uh, so let's say, okay, if you did wanna change the location, you can just click this box here and then you have a standard file browser where you can decide where to put your catalog. So here we go, brand new catalog created. What has been built so far? So if we look in our finder, uh, I placed it in the pictures folder, that's all we've got right now is our Capture One catalog. It's relatively small because it doesn't contain any information or hardly anything because we've yet to introduce any pictures into our catalog. So right now, uh, obviously there's nothing going on, so we need to get some photos into it. And that's where the import dialog comes in, which is this button right up here in the top left-hand corner, import images. So let's go ahead and click this, one second. There we go. Now I'm gonna just reset this tool because that's a collection from this morning. So we are going to um, just make sure we've deleted all the fun stuff we did this morning so we can start from scratch. Okay, all right, so we need to first choose some pictures to import. So the first thing I'm gonna do is choose a nest of folders. So let's say choose, 
and we're gonna go and choose uh, on this external hard drive, we've got my demonstration images and we're gonna choose Diego's set of folders actually. And the reason why I'm picking Diego's is because it's a top folder, if you like, with a number of subfolders. So I'm gonna say review for import and that's gonna show me the contents of those folders. But right now, this window is blank. Why is that? Because I haven't asked Capture One to include subfolders. So if I check this box, then we're gonna see the sum content of all those pictures. Now for these couple of demos, uh, we're just gonna import everything and then we're gonna look at different ways where we can choose to pick and unpick certain pictures as well. So we've defined where we wanna get our pictures from. Now what do we want to do with them? Now really in this import dialogue, the two sections that you wanna pay the most attention to are import from and import to. That's the two things that you have to get right. Everything else is, if you like, bonus information under that. So we are going to choose Add to Catalog. So what does that actually mean? So that means Capture One is going to reference, and that's the terminology we use. Capture One is going to reference where those photos are in their location. We're not going to move them. We're not going to copy them. We're not going to do anything else. Capture One will just know where to find them. And that would be Add to Catalog like so. And that's what we call a reference file because Capture One is referencing where it is in its location. So this is great. If you've already got um, organization structure on your hard drive and you just want Capture One to see that, then you can do so. So Capture One doesn't have to move anything around, mess up your, your organization that you might already have done. It will just see it exactly as you have created it. So under naming, we're gonna come back to naming uh, in another exercise we're gonna do in a minute. We could add some basic metadata if we wanted to. So let's put Diego's name in. We could add some adjustments, but we're gonna do that on our last import. And there's some things we can do after the import. But right now we're just gonna keep it super simple and import everything and say import all like so. Now these pictures will start coming in. Let's just open the first one up. So what's happening? So we've got an activity window up here at the front, which says generating previews. What does that mean exactly? So when we're looking at photos in Capture One, we don't always have to go and read the raw data. So as I scroll through to uh, the next picture, I'll go back to this one or this one, you see the performance is nice and speedy because what we're doing at this point is just generating a JPEG preview of all of the raw files or TIFF files or whatever you're importing into your catalog. Now it's really uh, critical to get the right size of those previews. Why? Because if your preview size is too small, then Capture One will have to, every time you switch to a new picture, go ahead and read out the raw data. So how do you change the size of your preview files? So if we look in Capture One's preferences and in the image tab, you'll see the first option up top here is preview image size, and that's pixels on the long edge. So that's this distance here. So it's really critical that if you're working with, for example, a 5K iMac, that you boost this up to 5,000 pixels. If you're working on a 4K screen, then you need to have this set to 3840. So this ensures that your preview is big enough to fill the viewer space, if you like, in Capture One. Now changing it here is not gonna have any effect on existing photos. So if you've perhaps been counterintuitively making this smaller, thinking that it will speed up performance, it will actually do the opposite. It's gonna slow down Capture One. So if you feel that you need to change this and you already have existing pictures, then what you need to do is say, regenerate previews. And that will just go through that preview generation process again. So just be aware of that to get the maximum performance out of your uh, catalog as well. Okay, so we've done our first import. That was just a super simple one. We, if you remember, we just said uh, import from Diego's folder. We included the subfolders and we said add to catalog. So your files will stay where they are. So a nice, super simple import process. Now in our first tool tab, this is where we manage our library. So if we go down to the folders tool and I just expand this one out, then we can see we've got the exact same structure 
if we go to the finder and just go ahead and find Diego, there we go. Then you see we've just got the exact same structure here, Traveler SSD, et cetera, et cetera, and then the structure that we see down below like so. So all we're doing is just reading those files or referencing them where they are. So the folders area shows you that exact location. Now up the top here, catalog collections, these are just some shortcuts. So we can't change anything here. It's just showing me the total number of photos in my system, regardless of where they are. It's gonna show me the last 10 imports that we made with the time and date, recent captures if we shot tethered and a trash as well. User collections, we'll come back to once we've done with um, importing. So let's import something else and do something slightly different. So we're gonna import again. And this time we're gonna choose a couple of different folders. So let's say choose. Uh, we're gonna go back to demonstration images and we're gonna choose Danielle's folder who you saw earlier. And we're gonna choose Tina's folder down here as well. So I've just, sorry they're far apart. I've got both selected. Uh, where's Daniel gone? I did have both selected. There we go. Now I've got two items selected just with a command click or if you're on a PC that would be an alt click. So now I'm going to see the contents of both folders and notice that it says two items and the button says review for import. So now if I look at review for import then I can see the contents of both of those folders like so. So just be aware that you can do that as well. For this import, I don't need to include subfolders because there are no subfolders. Okay, um, we're gonna do exactly the same as before. We're gonna add to catalog. Uh, we're not gonna put Diego's name there because uh, he didn't take these. Um, and we're not gonna change the naming either. So it's gonna be similar to how we did before. So let's say import all once again. So we'll let those uh, complete. Gonna build our previews. The preview generation is a background task. So if I'd imported 500 pictures, but I'm desperate to start editing, you can just go ahead and pick anything you like and Capture One will prioritize that preview generation. So don't sit here and wait for this to finish. It's really not worth it. I can just go ahead and do what I need to do. And then if I you know, wanna start working on this shot, I can do so immediately. So don't feel you have to wait for that to stop. Okay, so now we can see under demonstration images, we've got Danielle's and we've got Tina's like so, and we've got an additional entry here for my recent imports. So at 12 minutes past four mine time, we had 20 shots. And now the total number of images, regardless of where they are, is now 69. Great, so let's do a third import, which is gonna be a little bit more involved. We use uh, some of the more features that we can use in the import dialog. Just gonna have a quick check uh, for questions. Um, good one from Joachim actually. How can you change an existing catalog location? Easy, think of this. So this is the catalog we made. So let's just go and find this. This is just a document, like a Word document or a PDF file or a JPEG or whatever. That's all it is. And wherever I open it from, it will open up in Capture One. So if I pick this up, and then moved it to a different location, I could just simply open it again. That's really all it is. You don't have to do anything fancy. I could drag this to an external hard drive and open it from there. Makes no difference. So just treat this as any other document that you would on your computer, like a Word document, like a PDF file. You're just opening it in Capture One, and Capture One is there, you know, finding all the images that you've imported. Okay. Um, let's see, let's close this down one second and let's, uh, it's a great shot, pigs on the beach, who'd have thought it, let's um, open up or let's import from a memory card this time. So uh, I've got a memory card right here, so we're going to stick this in our card reader like so. And now we've got the contents of our card, which opens up pretty quickly. If it doesn't open automatically, then just select it from the import from dialog. But generally, memory cards um, get detected pretty you know, straight away. So don't worry about that too much. So we've got our import from our import to, this is where we want to change it because we don't want to leave them on the memory card. That would be a bad idea. We want to get them somewhere safe. 
So this is where the copy to folder option comes in. We'll chat about copy into catalog in a second. Right now we've only done add, and now we're gonna do copy to folder. So where do I want to put these pictures? So I'm gonna to go to my pictures folder, I'm gonna make a new folder, and I'm gonna call this uh, uh, capture one photos, like so. And say create, set that as my import folder. So now they were gonna be imported to capture one photos. But now that we've chosen this option, we can also define the subfolder. So this is really, really handy because it means if I'm always going into this import dialog from memory cards, I don't have to change this top location. I can just define different subfolders all the time. So these are some shots from Thailand. So I'm just gonna chuck in a subfolder here called Thailand. Now the good thing is we can expand on that if we wish and ask Capture One to make us some subfolders automatically. And the reason, or sorry, the method of to do that is by clicking this button here, which opens up uh, the location subfolder token window, which is a bit of a mouthful, but basically what a token is, extracts some form of metadata from the photo or from Capture One to create a folder. And a very, very simple example of that is the date that the picture was taken. So throughout um, Alex's holiday, our product manager, Alex, if he wants to divide these up into the different days of the trip, he could do that manually, but that would be pretty laborious. Or we can simply say to Capture One, look at the photo as it's being imported, check what the date is, create a folder of that date and put the photo in there. So we'll just do all that automatically. So what we need to find in our big list of tokens is image date. So we're gonna drop that up there. There's various different date formats. So let's just grab year, month, day, like so. Now, right now, it's just gonna create a folder called Thailand and then the date, which isn't great. So what I want to do is I wanna have Thailand as my top level. And then I wanna have the date folders filter down under that. So all I need to do between Thailand and image date is put a forward slash. So you can just about see it in there. So that's gonna make Thailand and then another subset of folders under that. Now we could add more tokens if we want to, but that's just a good you know, way to get us started. So let's say, okay. Next thing we wanna do is change some naming. Now this is from this morning's webinar. So we're gonna delete that and do it all over again. So you could, of course, just use the name that's on the memory card, which is normally, you know, underscore DSC 01527 and so on. But that's not a super intelligent um, naming convention, because at some point, if you shoot lots and lots of pictures, you might get into the situation where you have uh, duplicate numbers, where it's just rolling over, and that actually happened to my own catalog using a couple of different Sony cameras, the RX100 that you're looking at me now and a Sony A7 had the same naming convention and I had a clash in my catalog, which, which drove me crazy because I couldn't figure out what was going on. So it helps if you always have, you know, a, a unique file name for all your pictures. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use a few more tokens and I'll explain why in a second. We're gonna use one called job name and then we're also gonna have the image date as well, so that appears in the file name itself. And we're also gonna have a counter to make it unique. Now a one digit counter is not especially useful, so let's make that a four digit counter, which is just a little down arrow next to the token itself. And now to spread out that naming convention so it doesn't look quite so messy, we're just gonna put a little hyphen in between each one, or you could do an underscore, whatever you feel. So now we're gonna have job name, which I'll explain in a minute, the image date, so let's do year, month, day again, and we're gonna have a four digit counter. Now you might be thinking, my word, this is an awful lot to set up each time, but remember you should only really have to do this once, and you can also save a custom preset, so you can save your naming preset too. There's a few samples here you can play with, or you can build your own as well. So now let's explain what job name means. This enables you to have a naming format which you don't have to always go into this editor and keep changing. So let's say, okay, 
going to delete this. So under the format here, we've got the token job name. All that's going to do is look at what's filled in here. So in this case, it's going to be Thailand. So I'm going to write Thai, Thailand in here like so. And underneath, we're going to get the sample name of what my file name should look like. So if I just click on one picture, it's going to show me what that shot is. Thailand 20, uh, year 2020, um, February the 2nd. Now it's showing me the counter is 68. Why is that? Because I'd already imported some stuff this morning. So I just want to reset the import counter by clicking on the three dots and put that back to number one. You can also shortcut that if you wish. Let's add a style at the same time. So I'm going to add, uh, what should we have? Let's add a lifestyle. Why not? Let's go for Stockholm one. And down here at the bottom after import, we could decide to eject the card if we wish. We could also erase the images after copying, which I think you'd have to be very brave to do if you had a power cut halfway through or some kind of system meltdown, that wouldn't be good. But if you're brave, <laughs> then you can also do that as well. So to recap on what we've done here, we're importing from our memory card. They're gonna to go to a folder called Capture One Photos. If we click on this, it's gonna show us exactly where it is. And Capture One's gonna put them in a subfolder called Thailand, and then in a further set of subfolders based on the date that the image was captured. We're gonna rename them using this format here, and we're also gonna apply a style at the same time. Now, before we get excited and hit import all, let's talk about, well, do we uh, want to import everything? Maybe, maybe not. So there's a relatively new feature that was added in Capture One 21.1. So if you haven't upgraded, do so today, so you can get this. If we tap on the viewer button like so, then we get a larger view where we can see the picture much larger. So we can judge focus, composition, all those kinds of things. Now the size of this picture is related to really how big your monitor is. So if you're working on a 4K display, then it will be nice and big. It also relates to the size of uh, the preview file that your camera writes into your memory card. Some cameras do a pretty big one. Canon and Nikon, for example, their previews are quite large. Sony is a bit smaller and so on. So it does vary. So now we wanna go through a selection process, if you like. By the way, if you've shot videos, then they also play in the viewer, which is quite nice. Uh, but if we wanna go through and take away some of these pictures, we've got uh, some choices. Now, if we look down here at the bottom for keyboard shortcuts, then it shows me or reminds me what those shortcuts are. So S on your keyboard for pick, A for unpick, or spacebar to toggle, and cursor keys to move back and forth. Now I find um, using the space bar is by far the easiest way to do it. So if I just tap on my space bar, then it just toggles the shot on and off. Um, I know you won't be able to see behind, but all we have to do is toggle on the space bar. You can just about see it underneath and that will uh, toggle it on and off. So if I just hide me for a second, then it's very easy to go through and then decide, okay, any of these shots I don't want, we've got too similar, so let's not have this one, don't like that one, and so on. So it's really speedy to blast through and just tap the space bar when you need it. Important point, uh, the currently selected shot is always gonna be in the middle. Why? Because it means if you've got a sequence of photos, like perhaps five in a row or something like that, then the middle one, you'll always be able to see what pictures are coming up. Let's say it's five very similar bride and groom shots, as an example then you'll always be able to see, okay, when does that sequence ends and when does that sequence start? So again, we can very quickly go through and browse uh, nice and fast. I'm just using my cursor keys and you can see the speed that we can go through. So really, really super speedy. All right, well, let's import 78 pictures. Why not? Just to see the speed. And uh, we are good to go. So let's say import down the bottom here, like so. So now uh, it's gonna be slightly slower because we're importing from the memory card to my hard drive. So we've got some writing of data to do. Previously, we were just referencing them in their spot. So whilst that's going ahead, uh, and again, if you're desperate to start editing, you can do so. So if I wanted to open this shot, 
and start playing around with um, adjustments, there's absolutely nothing to stop me doing that. While that's importing, if we look here, you can see that we've got Stockholm number one applied as well. If you decided actually for this image, it doesn't work, we can just click on it and clear it. But if you're using a style as like a, you know, a base set of adjustments, that's a really speedy way to use up your workflow. Now we're just generating previews, that's fine. I'm just gonna close that. And then if we go through, we can see uh, the pictures that we have imported. And once again, that preview generation is a background task, so we don't have to worry about waiting for that to finish. Okay, so what's happened in our folders tool? If you remember, I asked Capture One to import them to Capture One Photos make a subfolder called Thailand, and then divide them up into their various date folders. If we look over at the folders tool, then we're gonna see now my Macintosh HD shows up. Users, Capture One, Pictures, Capture One Photos, Thailand, and then all the various different dates like so. So that was quite, if you like, an efficient import routine because now when I want to import some other stuff from card, all I've got to do really is change my subfolder here. If I want to, I'm gonna put it in Capture One folders. And then for my naming, I would just change the job name and then that's it. So everything else will work really, really nicely. So don't feel you have to spend a long time punching all those various different uh, data in. It's designed so that you don't have to change a lot when you go back into your import dialog. A uh, question from Clive, I just saw pop up. Is it a good idea to have a separate catalog for each year? Some people do. Um, the disadvantage of having a separate catalog for each year is that you can't search across a wide variety of images. But if you shoot, you know, tons of images, like in the hundred thousands or whatever, you might find it easier to manage to have several smaller catalogs. But really Clive, there's, not a massive benefit in doing that, if you like. Okay, um, what are we gonna do next? Let's just check my notes. Okay, so you can now see up the top, we've got our three imports that we did. And then once again, our catalog collection shows us the entire collection of images. And these are our three recent imports that we did. So let's go down to Diego. So I'm just gonna collapse that for a second. Let's mention what this means in catalog because we haven't spoken about this. So if we go back into our import dialog, the one option that we didn't use was copy into catalog. So those of you who perhaps used Aperture uh, in the past, your ears might be pricking up because this is really a workflow that stems from that. Uh, if you were using Aperture, Aperture would force you or suggest that you use this kind of workflow. And what this essentially means is that anything that you import gets packaged inside your catalog, so disappears inside it. So if we look at our Capture One catalog, if my doc would like to show, please. Uh, if we look at our Capture One catalog, Webinar PM, it's got a bit bigger now because we've made some previews. If I was to use the uh, import to copy into catalog, if I was to use that, they would disappear directly inside this. Now, if you're on a PC, this shows up actually as a folder nest. On a Mac, it can be packaged into one uh, file. But the photos will go directly into it. Why on earth would I want to do that? Uh, Essentially, it makes the catalog portable. So if I wanted to pick up this catalog and just move it to a different location or a different computer, the catalog and photos come with it. So it's just in a single package. And they're referred to as managed files because Capture One is managing their location. You have no control over where the pictures are. They are just sitting happily inside the catalog. The disadvantage of that is, of course, the more pictures you add, the bigger the catalog gets to the point eventually where it will outgrow its storage medium. So then you have an issue of deciding, well, do I make another catalog? Do I take some out? And so on. So that's what copy into catalog means. Now, if you want to, there's nothing to stop me, say cancel, there's nothing to stop me grabbing any picture. Let's grab the pigs 
and if I drag and drop it to in catalog, then they will be physically copied inside the catalog. So if I drag it back out and put them back in Bolivia, then they will go back to wherever I've dragged it to. So you can copy between referenced as it is now and managed if I was to drag it there. And now that folder of happy beach pigs are now actually inside uh, the catalog here. Now as a hack on a Mac, if you right click and say show package contents, then you'll see a folder called originals. And then eventually once we go through this weird subset, we will find our actual picture. But Capture One is controlling this structure, so you have no control over that. So let's put it pigs back in Bolivia like so. <clears throat> so um, you've seen me do a move there by moving from inside the catalog to outside the catalog. So this is probably um, a good time to talk a little bit more about the folders tool and what we can do here. And in particular, for moving photos. You can move photos within Capture One. You can also move them within Max Finder or Windows Explorer, but I would strongly suggest that you do any moving of pictures inside Capture One. It's more efficient, it's faster, and you don't break the connection or possibly lose images, which I'm gonna show you in a second. So let's say, let's go to Denmark for a second. So lovely, typical snowy uh, Danish shot. Let's say uh, Diego had made a terrible mistake and this wasn't Denmark and it was actually Sweden and he wants to move it into a new folder called Sweden. So the easiest way to do that is in the folders tool, you'll see a plus and a minus. This will make Capture One aware of additional folders. It's not an import function. It's only to add a folder to a catalog or you can delete folders from the catalog. So I'm gonna say plus, and then we're gonna make a new folder in Diego's one called uh, Sweden. Oh, it was there already from this morning. So let's make another country. Let's call it Norway, like so, and say create. So now Capture One is aware of Norway. It's not aware of Sweden because there was no pictures in it to import. So now I can pick up our chili cyclist and drag him across uh, to Norway, like so. And just to be absolutely clear, if we look in the finder, uh, where were we, travel SSD. Oh, little tip, just stop doing that. If we right click and say show in finder, or Windows Explorer, Capture One's gonna take us straight to that location. So now you can see this picture is sitting happily in that folder. If I wanna move it back, then I can just pick it up and drag and drop like so. And again, Capture One will physically move it to that new location. You can do a bunch of pictures. So if we go to Japan for a second and I shift select four photos and I drag them to Norway, like so, then the whole lot gets moved. Again, if I drag four photos and move them back to Japan, then the whole lot gets moved as well. Now, the good news is, is if I'd made any adjustment, so let's just muck around with uh, this shot for a second. So if I've made some adjustments, of course, if I was to move this to Norway, then nothing gets busted, the adjustments are gonna carry along with it. So let's put you back in uh, Japan. So hopefully you can see it's very easy to move pictures around within Capture One, which is exactly what you should be doing. Let's say I've made a blunder and I've decided to move this in Finder or Windows Explorer. So I'm gonna grab it out of Denmark and put it in uh, Norway, like so. So now immediately you saw what happened is that this picture is now offline because Capture One does not know where it is because I'm an idiot and I moved it in Finder when I should have done it in Capture One. But have no fear, what we can do is right click on the picture itself and choose locate. So if you do locate, then Capture One will say, well, idiot, show me where the picture is. So now I can think, ah, where did I put it? I'm pretty sure I put it in the Denmark folder uh, no, I didn't. Did I put it in the Norway folder? Yep, there it is. So now I can say open and then Capture One will sort out the catalog uh, pretty quickly and then you don't have to worry about it and remind yourself to do it in Capture One next time. Same goes for an entire folder. If I drag Norway on top of Denmark, like so, 
I'll get a warning saying, do I want to move the folder and all its contents? Yes, I do. So then now Norway is sitting in Denmark. I'm sure Denmark wouldn't be happy about that. Uh, but if we do our right click and say, show in Finder, we can now see Norway is sitting in Denmark as well. Now, if I do a stupid thing and move this back like so, now the entire folder is being reported as missing has this warning triangle next to it. So exactly the same situation as the picture, right click, choose locate, tell Capture One what you've done with it. So we've put it right here and now I can say open and Capture One will sort it back out like so. Um, huh, I saw Jerome's question. Uh, let's say you moved all your photos to another folder. Is there a way to locate all of them once instead of one folder at a time? So let's talk about that, actually. I just did that, it took me a day. So lesson, lesson learned, uh, Jerome. Um, so what you can do in that situation is let's say, and I've done this um, three or four times, when my hard drive has got full up and I store all my pictures on an external hard drive, so that got full up and I think, what do I need to do? Uh, it's a one terabyte drive you know, it's quite an old drive, let's buy a six terabyte drive and then move that across and then hopefully I won't have to do it again for a very long time. So as we did with making our Norway folder, we can make Capture One aware, you know, of, a, of another hard drive and then we could drag the entire contents across to that. So if I said plus in folders, oh, um, sorry, where's my dialogue gone? That's strange, capture ones. Oh, it's over here on the other monitor, curses. Wrong monitor I was looking at. So I've said plus, and now I could add, you know, any other hard drive that I wanted to. So I could add uh, the memory card if I want it, I'm not going to, but I could simply just use this function to add another hard drive, and then I could drag my entire folder across to that hard drive. And then that way it's done in two actions, there's no locate necessary, none of that awkwardness so lesson is do everything inside capture one it's much much faster okay um yeah as uh as yulia said on facebook if you've if you start with the top level folder it's easy but if you've moved a bunch of stuff in finder and they're all over the place then you've just got to locate it individually so just do it in capture one it's much faster it's much easier so um, I think that was what we wanted to do for moving stuff, pretty sure. Yeah, so you can move a folder, you can move an image, you can move an entire nest of folders to a different place if I wanted to. So just do all those things within Capture One. So if I want, wanted to, as an example, to move Capture One demonstration images to my pictures folder, I could do so just by dragging and dropping it into my uh, in the folders area here, and it will physically take them off this external SSD and copy them internally, all adjustments, everything, all in place and so on. So it's a powerful area, so don't feel you need to use the Explorer or Finder to do so. Okay, uh, what's next? So we've spoken about organization down here, and this works great for most of us, to be honest. So by organizing at some point on system level. So this is what I refer to at system level. So I can go ahead, I can browse them in my system. So I'm just seeing the exact same structure of the pictures I've imported into my catalog as I see in my hard drives. So that's that's fine. The good news is if there was uh, you know, a massive volcano in Denmark and Copenhagen was destroyed and there was no more Capture One, then you've still got a pretty good structure that you can transfer to another application. Hopefully that's not gonna happen, but it's a good safety thing to have in your mind. However, um, the issue with organizing like this is that a single picture can only really live in one destination. So let's go to Alex as an example. Let's say Alex wanted to, throughout his holiday, just pick out the best 50 pictures or the best 10 pictures that he wants to 
print or put on Instagram or something like that. So what can Alex do? He can do what we did before. He can go to Thailand. We can click plus. We can add a new folder called stuff for Instagram. Instagram. And then add that to our catalog. So now I've got a stuff for Instagram folder. And if I wanted to, I could look through my collection of pictures and then drag stuff to that folder. But there's an issue with that because now it's it's come out of its parent, if you like. So this nice organization then breaks because I'm trying to organize it in another way. So if you're completely reckless, you could think, well, I duplicate the raw file and it can live in two places. But that's very reckless because of course, you don't know which one is the most recent in terms of adjustments. So it's generally a bad idea. So this is where user collections comes into play. And as I said, this is system level organization because you can see it on your system. User collections is if you like virtual organization and you can only see it within Capture One. So anything I do in user collections doesn't move the pictures. It doesn't create folders on my system anywhere. It's only visible in Capture One. So you're using the power of the database to do some really smart organizing. So let's take Alex's example and see what we can do. Um, I'm just gonna check that. Any other questions? Um, no, I think we're pretty good at the moment. Oh, good point from Thomas, actually. Uh, it's important to note that Capture One allows you to edit offline files. That's a perfectly good comment to pull in, actually. So if I ejected my SSD drive, I can actually still edit everything there because we've got the previews. That's another benefit of the previews. So even if something is offline, we can still edit it. We can export using uh, the quick proof recipe because that uses the preview. Uh, there's a couple of things we can't do like use luminosity mask because that requires the raw file. You couldn't use the focus mask, but most editing you can do. So that's pretty handy. So if I wanted to take my laptop indoors up to the house, but I didn't want to take the hard drive with me, I can just disconnect it, edit, and job done. So good point. Thank you, Thomas, for reminding me that. All right, so let's take Alex, Alex's example and see what we can do in user collections. Now, collection, a collection is just a collection of pictures. It could be a folder, it could be an album, it could be a smart album, but this is why it's called user collections. And we have four different types of collections. Uh, which might sound um, excessive, but they all perform a different job. So let's start at the top level with something called project, and we're gonna call this Thailand Vacay, or Vacay, Vacay, like so. And we get this new collection made, and the icon looks like a little cardboard box, is the best analogy. So now Alex is gonna think, all right, I wanna drag some of the pictures in there. Actually, I wanna drag everything. So I'm gonna to go to my uh, recent imports, which was this one, which is the entire 78 pictures. Let's just hide my browser. And I'm gonna select them all, and I'm gonna drag them to the project. But I can't, why is that? Because the project can't in itself contain any pictures. We need to open that cardboard box and then put some kind of container inside it, which allows me to do so. So what I'm gonna do is right click on Thailand Vacay and say new inside, and we're gonna make an album. And an album is just a simple container for photos. So we're gonna say all photos like so. So now I've got an album which I can now happily drag pictures to like so. So now I've got all 78 pictures sitting in that album. Now Alex is thinking, I wanna divide these up a bit. So I'm gonna go back to the project right click and say a new album and we're going to call this instagram not with a capital n instagram and now i'm going to look through the shots and think what is instagram worthy so our, that one's pretty good so i'm going to drag and drop that um, let's take our boat dude let's drag and drop that let's have a happy cat and so on you get the idea now if you don't want to drag and drop and you want to speed it up a bit we can right click and we can set this as the selects 
collection, which is very difficult to say. So if we set that as the select collection, it might be hard to see, but there's a little tiny icon there, which just looks like an arrow diving into a tray. So now if I go back to all photos, I can use a shortcut, which, uh, where is it? Is here, add to selects album. So Command J, Control J if you're on a PC. So now all I can comfortably do, uh, if you look at the count here, it's three pictures. So if I do Command J on my keyboard, oh, I'd already added that one. <laughs> Let's choose a different picture, that would help. So if I do Command J on my keyboard, oh, that's what I was doing Option J, that's why. If I do Command J on my keyboard, that now adds this picture. So if we go to this one, Command J, or equally if I had a shift selection of pictures, like so, and did Command J, then it adds all of those to the collection, or we can do, you know, just a simple drag and drop. So if I shift select these three and drag and drop, like so. So now we've got a couple of different collections going on as well. Now Alex thinks, it'd be really cool if I could see all the best pictures that I took. So I'm gonna right click and we're gonna add a smart album inside. Now a smart album, you don't drag and drop pictures to it, it populates itself. So it fills itself with photos based on criteria that you set for it. So if I say new smart album, this is gonna be uh, best Thailand. And so I know exactly what it's doing. It's just simply five star pictures like so. Right now we have zero search criteria, nothing is here. Um, for speed, I can use a preset which is simply loads up rating equals five stars. And let's say, okay, so now I can go through to um, all my photos and I can use my number five on my keyboard and decide, let's just make the thumbnails a bit bigger. And then I can just use my cursor key and decide, okay, that's five star, that's a five star, we're all about the cats, uh, that's a five star, let's just tag a few of these uh, five, so you get the idea. So now if I look at Best Thailand, five stars, we've now got these populated like so. What if we went down to Diego and we went to Happy Beach Pigs and we made this five stars? What's gonna happen? Is that gonna end up in this area? No, no Happy Beach Pigs. Why? Because this smart album is only interested what's in this box. So it's only sorting through that box, if you like. So that's a really powerful aspect of how a project works, because it's only interested in what's inside it, in terms of using a smart album. Now you might think, well, it would be really cool to see all the best pictures in my catalog, which you would be right. So what I would need to do is just close this project down, uh, go to all images, and then I'm gonna make a smart album. And we're gonna call this global five star. So this means everything in the entire catalog. And we're gonna use the same preset again. And we're gonna say, okay. So now we've got global five stars. So if I click on that, we've got everything from Thailand and happy beach pigs as well because it's outside of the project. So it's looking through the entire catalog, scouring for five-star photos. So now if I go to uh, Danielle, for example, and we five-star this, and then we go back to global five-star, Danielle now pops up in here. So that's very useful to be able to have these five-star collections. Um, I saw a comment, um, let's see, Daniel was saying, very formal, Mr. Grover is doing, is tying into my question above. Is there a way to separate out variants so some are included in a folder or whatever? Yeah, so variants can have different star ratings and different color tags. So if I just clone this variant for a second, so we've got two happy beach pigs. If I make this zero stars, then it goes away. So yes, they can have different color tags and different star ratings. So you can define uh, variants like that. Um, there was also a question which has whizzed past, so I missed it, I think. Oh, that was it, Martin. If I delete an image inside the collection, will it delete the picture? Well, you've got choices there. So if I simply hit backspace on my keyboard, then it will just go from, sorry, 
Instagram, if I hit backspace on my keyboard, then it's gone from that collection. If I was to right click, you'll see delete from album Instagram at the bottom. If we look in the file menu, um, or is it the edit menu? I'm used to the shortcuts. Where are you? Pesky delete. Here we go. So if we look in the image menu, we've got delete from disk or move to catalog trash. So if you want the security of having a second chance, or we can say delete from disk, and then it will say, are you sure? You can delete from the disk or you can remove from the catalog. So you've got choices there, it just depends which dialogue you go into. But thankfully the backspace key just takes it out of that collection, doesn't delete it forever. Okay, now staying on the notion of these global five star smart albums, these can be very useful for tracking certain things like shots from a particular camera or shots from a particular lens. So let's uh, go to all images and let's make another smart album. And we're gonna say um, search criteria by hitting plus. We're gonna find the camera model, that's down a bit, camera model equals, let's say Nikon, like so. And we need to give this as a title, so we say shots from Nikon. And say, okay, so now if I look at shots from Nikon, no images in collection. Why is that? Maybe I didn't have any Nikon shots, I do. But why isn't that working? Because I would expect to be able to see this photo here because it's um, a Nikon file. But what we have discovered or what you will discover is that the way the manufacturers write um, their name or their lens models or their camera models is not massively intuitive. So there's a much easier way to create these kinds of albums. So let's delete that. And then let's look in the filters tool. So the filters tool will show you, if I select all images, it will show me how many photos agree with um, certain metadata like lenses, camera make, and so on and so forth. So you see camera make is not Nikon, it's Nikon Corporation. So because I didn't type Nikon Corporation, nothing showed up, which I know is a bit crazy. Uh, so how can I use this information to create myself some easier to use global um, smart albums. So let's say we want to see everything. So we're on all images. I want to see everything from the Nikon Corporation, like so. So now I can see those filtered results. So to transform this into a smart album, and you probably never figure this out without me telling you, uh, is these little three orange dots here. So if I click that, I get another view of the advanced search window and it's preloaded that criteria. So camera make equals Nikon Corporation. I guess if I'd done camera make contains, it would have worked, but now we're equaling it perfectly. So now if I say create smart album, let's give it a name, Nikon Shots. Now it uh, is popped up here. So look, just to prove it, if I go to Instagram and back to Nikon Shots, that shows me everything from a Nikon. Now, if we wanna be fancy and combine a couple of things, we could also do that. So uh, let's say, let's go back to all images. I wanna see all my five star shots, but only from Nikons. So if I hold my option key down or Alt and click this, then that will combine those two filters. So five star and Nikon only. So now if I click on my three dots, Rating must equal five stars, camera make equals Nikon Corporation. So let's create that smart album and we call that Nikon five star shots, like so. So now if we look here, we've got Nikon shots and then we've got Nikon shots that were five stars, happy beach pigs once again. So if we make this one five stars, that's a NEF file. So now that should show up in this album as well. This one still of course only shows the five star shots that belong to Thailand. So the global smart albums are just really useful ways of keeping track of, um, you know, your favorite shots, shots from a particular camera. I've done camera make 
but you could do camera model as well. And if you don't see the search criteria that you're looking for, click on the filters submenu here, and we can say show hide filters. Come here. Oh, stuck on that side of the screen. And then you can tick on what you want to have. So it could even be by serial number if you wish, if you want to see which camera is doing what. Uh, so you can decide by lens, uh, you know, aperture, all that kind of stuff, which is sometimes interesting. So if we do all images and to highlight how ridiculous some of the naming convention is for lenses, let's see we want to see, or let's clear our search criteria first, sorry, this clears our current search criteria. If we want to see everything that was shot on the Sony FE 28mm f2, there's no way I would know that's how the model number looks in the metadata. So this is a much easier way to do it. Let's create a smart album and call that Sony FE 28 millimeter shots. So whenever I get any new shots from this camera, then they're gonna automatically load into that smart album. Uh, Mark says, can you make a adjustments to an image from a smart album? Absolutely, of course, it's just a collection like any other. So let's go to uh, Nikon 5 star and Happy Beach Pigs and just change the exposure. And now, of course, if we look at this in uh, Nikon shots, then we've got this variant is uh, the same because this one actually didn't have five stars. So going back to Daniel's question, yes, you can separate them out. But it's just a collection of pictures uh, like anything else. Um, just checking other questions. Can you sync a catalog? Can you sync a catalog between one on a desktop and a laptop? I guess you could do. I mean, the danger is that um, if you're using something like cloud storage, what can work, let's say if we stored our catalog uh, on um, cloud storage, then you could technically sync it between any applications that you would like. However, if you quit Capture One before Dropbox or Google Drive has finished syncing, and then you go to open it on another machine, that's where you can run into issues. So it isn't necessarily always uh, a great thing to do. Uh, Jonathan says, could we just write part of the criteria? I'm surprising didn't Nikon work. That's because uh, if we just um, edit, say edit smart album, depends on this criteria, equals. So I had equals showing. If it said contains, that would have worked nicely, but equals is exactly that. It has to match perfectly. So if we did contains, whatever, then that would have worked perfectly, Jonathan, yes. All right, so now we looked at, um, let's just collapse filters so we have some space. So we looked at albums, smart albums, and projects. What is a group? Group is the OCD sufferer's delight, including myself, which allows you to just organize this area a bit better. As I'm sure you can appreciate, as you add more and more to your catalog, this list is gonna grow and grow and grow, and then it's gonna get a bit untidy. So all group does is just a dumb organization item. So let's uh, make a new group. And then we're going to call this whatever family vacations just to use that analogy again and then i'm going to drop thailand into that that neatens that up now i'm going to make another group and i'm going to call this global smart albums like so and then i can grab uh, my global five stars my global nikons my Nikon five stars, my Sony FE 28 mil shots, and so on. So now this is starting to look a bit tidier. So next time we go on vacation, if we can anytime soon, I can right click in group and say new project. And then let's say DK, sorry, Denmark, Denmark trip, like so. And now I'm ready to go again and organize as I wish. So really, as I said, they're just nice organizational items, oops, finally, to um, tidy up this area. And of course, if you make a spelling mistake like I did, you can just edit it like so. 
You can also have, you know, groups can be, you know, very extensive. So if you need to have more groups inside a group, then you can also do that as well. If you wanted to divide your trips up into continents, you could do that with another group and so on. So it's only the, the project which has this clever ability to only, uh, oh sorry, at least a smart album inside a project has that ability to only look inside the project itself. And by the way, if we click on the top level of the project, that also shows me all the contents. Now it doesn't negate you also organizing like this for the reasons I said, but this just gives you much more powerful ability to be a little bit more creative with your organization of a particular you know, personal trip, commercial job, uh, just gives you a lot more power and flexibility. And that's really what um, a catalog is designed for. Um, yeah, that's a good point from Jerome. The problem is with having a catalog on a desktop and a laptop is that the images have to stay in the exact same location. So if um, you've got D drive on one, as Jerome is saying, and C drive on, on another, then it's a pain in the backside. I mean, the easiest thing to do if you want to move your catalog around is rewind to what we spoke about earlier, is there's nothing to stop you having a catalog and the photos on an external hard drive. Then you can just plug that hard drive into any computer, open up the catalog, and you're good to go. So that's another option. If, it, if it's vital that you're syncing it across different uh, computers, that's also a good way to do it. Um, Daniel says, what's the icon next to the Instagram album? You must have missed that bit, Daniel. That's the selects collection. So I can right click and determine any collection as the select collection. And then we can just use a shortcut instead of having to drag and drop, you can use the shortcut Command J to add a photo to the selects album. So it's just a bit faster if you want to use the shortcut. Uh, Dan David says, can catalogs be merged or two or more folders in different catalogs be taken out? Yes, yes and yes. So you can do all those kinds of things. So uh, first part was, can I merge a catalog? Yes. So you can just say import capture one catalog that will merge those two together. We can right click on a collection and say export as catalog as well. We can right click on this collection and also say export as catalog. When you pick this, you can also include the reference originals, which means it will create a packaged managed catalog, sorry. So you can extract that out and pop the photos inside it, as we said as well. So yeah, you can do all of those uh, thing. You can do all of those things. Um, Paolo says, why can't I select more than one album to see the pictures across them all? The way to do that, Paolo, is if they are in a uh, project, then you can see the sum total of all of those. But I can't select more than one album like so. But by looking at the project, then I can see the sum total. So it is possible. Um, I see we are pretty much out of time, but I think that's how that's pretty much as far as we wanted to go in terms of organization. As I said, there's nothing wrong with organizing like this in folders. The golden rule is do your folder and image moves inside Capture One. There's no reason that you should need to use Finder or Windows Explorer. There's also nothing wrong with combining this kind of organization with virtual organization as user, user collections. So understand what the project does, uh, make sure that you keep it nice and neat and tidy with your groups. That just makes for browsing much, much easier. And appreciate that the smart albums, you know, work globally across the catalog if they're not inside a project. If they're inside a project like this one, it's only searching within Thailand. These here up the top, these are all fixed, so we can't change anything here. Just the sum total of all your pictures and the last 10 imports that you made as well. If they're annoying you, you can just collapse them down like so. Last little uh, question check. Oh, Chris says, when do you use groups? Sorry, Chris, I missed that question. So uh, hopefully you pick that up. Um, 
why does dick was asking why does the new album come up non-highlighted this calls as an additional swipe to give it a name yeah it's a good question actually dick i wonder if that's a big sir thing because i'm pretty sure it used to come up highlighted so if i say new inside it's highlighted for me dick so just double check on that or if i say new album it's actually highlighted so just double check so it might be an os thing but it's not something i, I haven't noticed um, myself last question over on youtube and facebook uh, dan says if i import a lightroom catalog and later add photos to the lightroom catalog are the new photos picked up in capture one definitely not dan um, the catalog import if you like is a uh, one shot <coughs> so capture one is reading the lightroom database structure and creating its own database structure based on that but it's not synchronized thereafter so if you were to add stuff to lightroom then you'd also have to add it to capture one but it's much easier just to use capture one uh, itself and finally martin i don't have the lens or camera filter tool that's because in the filters tool you have the ability if we click on these three dots to show and hide different filters so you must have missed that bit but now i can just tick on and off you'll see them disappear if i turn off color tag you can decide exactly what filters you want because there are so many it wouldn't be efficient to include include all of them uh, by default great so thanks for joining us today and learning all the exciting things that you can do uh, with catalogs don't forget to update your capture one to 21.1 for bug fixes new camera support and new lens support as well and of course there's always more lenses coming as well uh, also if you're on youtube uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe uh, because that way if you do subscribe then you'll be notified uh, when we go live half an hour before um, and also at the point we go live as well so that's just a good way to keep up to date with live sessions that are coming great there'll be more webinars coming up soon and live sessions as well so just keep an eye on our socials to be informed so take care everyone and see you soon bye now